Hi guys, it's Sig. As you can see, um, I'm alive, I'm well. God has kept me well, God has kept me safe. I want to first of all start by saying thank you to all the words of love and care that you guys have sent me over the past couple weeks. Thank you so much for sticking with me. Thank you so much for supporting me. Rest assured, at least for now, I am alive. I am alive, I am okay, I am well. So do not worry, just keep sending me your prayers and keep sending all the Christians your, their prayers as well. Intercede for everyone. I want to start the new year off by saying, first of all, Happy New Year in Christ. And I want to talk to you guys about the one person that we love above all else, which is Christ himself. Christ himself, we just come from the Advent period, we're still in the Advent period, the Eastern Orthodox and Eastern Christians will celebrate the Incarnation, will celebrate the Advent on January the 6th. And today, as we have the intersection between those two days, December 25th and January the 6th, I wanted to say, first of all, a Merry Christmas to all of the Christians out there that I wasn't able to wish Merry Christmas to. A Happy Christmas to you all. I want to take this time for you to understand the beauty of what it is that we believe. A masterful tapestry of the entire world, from the beginning of the conception of the human race till now, till the ages of ages, Christ came and revealed his logic towards us that we may not be without logic, without a word, without reason itself. And so, with the inception of the Advent, I'd like to talk to you guys about the Incarnation. So where do we begin? Well, we can't begin at the Incarnation itself. We can't begin at the action of Christ. We begin with man. We begin with the one whose fault the corruption of the world is. We begin with us, inwardly. God created us, he created us for a purpose. As Anselm of Canterbury says, God created us with a plan. He created us with a final cause, with a reason for why we should exist. He endowed us with intellect. He provided us a will to have an appetite towards God, who is goodness itself. But what did we do? We failed, we failed our purpose. Our soul failed in its mission and our body was corrupted. Well, how did this happen? Athanasius explains this amazing foundational truth of Christianity, the purpose of the soul and the purpose of the body. For Athanasius, the problem of the incarnation is one of confusion. It's one of pride, it's one of envy, it's one of lust, and ultimately it's one of destruction. And how did he articulate this? How did he make this known to his followers? How did he make this known to the schools in Egypt and around the world? What he said was, was that the soul has a specific beeline, a way of contemplation towards God, who is goodness itself. The source of all that is good. And Athanasius says that our will is designed to be aligned towards goodness, to be aligned towards goods. But in the fall of man, in the fall of man, Athanasius says that man shifted its will, shifted itself away from contemplating the good away from the very thing that gave their body and soul perfection and started to will after other goods. If you open your books to the letters of John the Divine, from 1st to 3rd John, John the Divine talks about three tripartite sins. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life itself. And those three sins are carried on from the very first man and woman, Adam and Eve. If you read the book of Genesis, chapters two and three, you will see how Adam and Eve fell. The Bible explains that Eve saw the fruit. She saw that it was good for food. 
And lastly, she thought that it could make someone wise. And because she pursued after this goodness, this good. Uh, now nah, I'm trying to shoot a thing. Sorry. That's uh, okay. Hello, guys. <laughs> Thank you. And because she lusted after these goods, these lesser goods, so to speak, her will was irrevocably bent away from God. And as we know, anything that is not God, anything that is not goodness, is in a sense evil. And so our souls became corrupted, became infected. And now we hunt after different goods. We lust after different things, contrary to nature. And Nathan Nature explains this beautifully. And because our souls are not aligned with God anymore, our bodies, which were energized, which were perfected, which were beatified by God through the heightening of the soul, our bodies, as Athanasius explained, fell. Because our soul went for the lower appetites of the body, of the flesh, we fell. We, our human condition fell. It is sick, it is infected. So what is man to do? Well, man searches after something. Man searches and searches for another good that can be found. Whether in money, whether in sex, whether in family even, anything, to satisfy, to satiate this goodness. But it cannot be satiated because it's not the purpose of contemplation. It is not the principle of contemplation. It doesn't satisfy us. It doesn't perfect our bodies because we are sick. And Athanasius beautifully explains that in order to defeat this sickness, perfection itself needs to purify the human condition. And this is precisely what is done by Christ in the Incarnation. The preamble to the Incarnation is the Old Testament. It is the prophets and the law of Moses. They herald in Christ. And through heralding in Christ, we are now set cosmically. The stage is set, the stars are aligned for the one action to save us all, the Incarnation. And Christ saves us not only by dying on the cross, which will be in a couple months from now, but He dies ultimately because of the fact that He became a man. He saves us principally by perfecting the universal human nature that we all possess. And in doing so, our bodies, our human nature, can be made like His glorious body, His glorious nature. Thank you guys for listening. Follow me on all socials and have a wonderful Christmas and a very happy new year. God bless you.